Found the queen while you're gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is... What'd you put in there? Uh, newspaper and burlap. Hmm. So no wood? No. Burlap works pretty good for a smoker. All right. Or if you don't have it, sometimes they use leaves or wood chips or anything you can keep burning. These are hive beetle traps, and I haven't used this kind. I just ordered them, but what you do is put apple cider vinegar in here, oh. and the, the slots in the top are small enough for hive beetles to get in, but not the bees, and they get down in there and they drown. You put some uh, soap dish soap, in, or dish soap in yeah. with it. Break so the they, surface tension right. when they hit, uh -huh. and they can't get out. And it lets them drown, then you'll see Sometimes these fill up with hive beetles. Like that one hive, it'll probably fill them up. Huh. I might put two of them in that one hive because yeah. <laughs> they're, they're out of control. I've made a bunch of these and... Uh... So, so I put a nail on a tree. I've got one hanging down there by the creek. Right. And... Uh, Do the swarm traps always have to be in trees? Well, they have to be, they recommend six to 10 feet off the ground, so trees work good. So in class, we had a guy come in who kind of makes his own, and uh, it was it's actually just a very small super, basically. Or not a super, but a very small, bottom box mm -hmm. with like three uh -huh. or four or five and you know, you well i used to use those other boxes yeah i used to use these for swarm traps mm -hmm. and then i found out that uh a swarm People wants like a space get... twice that big yeah so they about want the size of a super right so that's why i made these deeper and uh, so I only put five frames in them, but they've got all that open space down there like it's a hollow tree. Oh, that makes sense. And I've had more luck with these. So what we do is put, uh, uh, put some, uh, well, it's good to have old drawn comb. They smell the wax and see it's empty so they like that but then also you put in some empty frames like this I put a, a starter of a wax frame in there and then they started building off of that and here's another empty one they started building so anyway you leave them you want to have some drawn wax so that they can the queen comes and when they swarm all the bees stock up on honey and whatever it takes them to make wax so that when they get to a new location they know they've got to start making comb right away for the queen to start laying right so uh, like if, if a swarm moves in here within a week or two 
they might draw all this out with wax that quick and then the, they've got a place for the queen to start laying then they're bringing in pollen and nectar and everything the queen needs to start start the hive again so are you just able to tell from activity then on the outside when it's well yeah out? i just when i hang them i just drive by them once a week and see if there's any bees coming and going yeah and if you see them coming and going you know you got a swarm <laughs> cool. but sometimes you'll just see one they're just scouting it out yeah that's another thing the swarm will send out scout bees yeah so they go out and scout find the best place for the the queen and half the hive to go to and then they come back and do their dance and say oh i found a great place over here oh i found a better one over here no i found the best one over here so whichever one they decide on they take off and go there hmm. but they like the uh lemongrass oil it's yeah it smells like that's the, what he said he puts smells like oil the queen's it. pheromones or something so anyway that's that but i've built several of these and set them up but you can do the same thing with a box mm -hmm. i put an empty box on the roof of the shed the greenhouse over here and caught a swarm so there's nothing magic about it yeah it should pull up now but you can wait till we get okay. get down there and get into it That's mine on now. I love pain but not too much on the face. <laughs> been left alone all winter so they're right. not, not used to intruders yeah later on in the spring you can usually get in them without much protection but you gotta love pain <laughs> I don't know about loving it but <laughs> <coughs> Now this is a pollen patty I put on this winter to help feed them. Mm -hmm. They've eaten quite a bit of it. Then they've built all this comb up here, which really don't feed. I just put this queen excluder on to, right. to set the food patty on, basically. healthy hive there's a lot of activity yeah well if they built up comb onto the top of that is that a pretty much good indication that that's a good that thing full? well it, i know because uh they're just starting to bring in pollen and stuff there's hardly any nectar right. yet so trouble is getting one of the stuff here this is all propolis that they stick everything together with. Yeah.
honey probably from this winter, but I left it in the hive to see them. Usually this time of year the queen should be up here in the top of the box and she's probably laying. Isn't good, this is a honey super and should have had a hive body up here. Quite a lot of honey in there. These are hive beetles which you don't want. Yeah, they can destroy a hive if they get out of control. They'll eat the honey and, and defecate in the comb. If they get too out of control, the bees will just uh, leave. Right. So you always want to keep them in check. It's too bad we found the queen while you were gone. Oh, yeah. This is kept honey up here in the top. Then you can see pollen down in these cells and then these all these cap cells are baby bees see the light colored capping mm -hmm. so that's all baby bees new brood then they're making uh these big cells these cells here are drone cells those are male bees You got the same on this side. I'm looking for any queen cells that we might want to take. Our weather's been so up and down. I should have should have been in these around the first of March, but then we had that snowstorm and mm -hmm. it gets cold and then warm. It uh kind of mess things up this year so she's been laying these are new new uh, B cells and down in those down in these ones that aren't capped you can see new larvae eggs and larvae if you get the sun right on them little white worms down in there oh yeah that the Queen's just laid those recently So I like to clean these up too. So. I've got to get these hive beetles under control. And that just uses traps. There's no like. Treatment there's, like you do for what varroa mites or yeah there's uh, there's there's hive beetle traps and then uh, this isn't good having all these leaves here but if you put diatomaceous earth under the hives mm -hmm. uh, that'll kill them and hold them down too. Seems like they're getting more active. Yeah, they seem like they're Yeah, animals. the deeper you get, the less they like it. <laughs> You're disturbing their nest. They've been there all winter and they're not used to any intruders. Right. Now, the queen hasn't been laying on this frame. There's no, no eggs or cap cells. They do have uh, pollen in all those cells. And then there's honey out here that's capped. Mm -hmm. It's probably kept from last year. There's honey on that. Gosh, the hive beetles. Oh yeah. They're thick. Not good. So what, what's your plan for that? Are you going to trap them or? Uh, yeah, I'll put a hive beetle trap in and hopefully trap them. Well, I want to get under this and
I'm going to take this box off and we're going to look in the bottom box to see what's down there. Like that. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really smart setup. I've never seen one like this mm -hmm. before. But, um, oh, yeah. Ties or uh -huh. boards at the right. Yeah. So, are these all boxes that you made? Uh, yeah, a lot of them. Some are old. Try this side. Got a little gap over here. <clears throat> there. Nothing on that one. Try not to smash the bees because then that sends an alarm to the other ones that they're getting attacked. I remember this old frame forever. I put a roofing nail in the end of it because it broke. <laughs> I'm still using it. <laughs> That's full of pollen. You can see all the pollen in there. The yellow. Uh, the yellow is all pollen. Right. So they've been, and then if they've it's been shiny, in, it's nectar. They've been bringing in pollen, but they're not storing any down here because the the brood nest is up in the top. That's why we need to rotate it and switch it. This will set this back in. So what was it that uh, that they sealed that off with? Propolis. It's like, I think it's kind of like tree sap. A lot of pollen in that one. Don't fall. Backside of this frame, she's been laying down here. This is all, these are new, new bees here. And then there's some, uh, some larvae in there, but no fresh eggs. So she's she was laying in here before she moved up, probably. We even had a guy come in that, uh, <clears throat> well, he actually had something similar to this that uh, he would go and put out in the woods. Swarm traps. To, uh, yeah, swarm traps to get his own yeah. bees, because there's, there's three ways to get bees. Order them from a company, they send you a box of bees, uh, get them from an uh, established beekeeper, or catch them. Right. Yeah, Dad, how many swarm traps have you put out over the years, do you think? Well, each year I still put out six or eight swarm traps. And um, on one lot one year, I caught six swarms in a row off the same tree. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> Kind of a. These are all cap cells of uh, new bees. And there's some on this side. And there's larvae in there too. So you said you're swapping out um, oh. the upper with the lower. Yeah, when you come out of winter. 
See, they've eaten all the honey out of here this winter. We always leave them about 60 pounds of honey to make it through the winter because they hibernate, but they still have to eat. So they've eaten all that, and then they move move up into the top box, and it had it had uh, it still had quite a bit of capped honey in it from the winter. So they didn't starve this winter, but the whole cluster they stay around the queen to keep her warm and uh, so the whole cluster moves up to be around the food so because they're hibernating and they just want to sit and eat and don't generate they're generating heat to keep her warm through the winter so they move bees always had a tendency to move up so they've all moved up there and that's why she's laid eggs up there so in the spring we want to reverse that and put her down in the bottom uh, where she's got all her brood and then put the empty box up on top because then they'll start bringing in honey and she'll eventually move up here and lay eggs in this box now hmm. there's some new frames that haven't been in yet these are some old ones that we've harvested honey out of and so this will give them so, a head start <clears throat> and so the the holes there is that the the wax moth uh this is some kind of damage or got torn up but anyway they'll repair it all fill it with honey and cap it and it'll be beautiful okay then they draw this out with new wax and if you got if you put in a frame with some wax moth like remnants or whatever would the bees kill them off and fix it yeah they'd clean it up and yeah cool they keep the hive uh, cleaner than a hospital. So they, any foreign objects, they drag it out of the hive. And uh, I've even done cutouts and I put rubber bands around it to hold the comb in a, like an empty frame. And after a few weeks, they've drug the rubber bands out the entrance. <laughs> they chew them in two and take them out because it doesn't belong in there. <laughs> So we're going to put these in and stagger them so that they'll be more prone to draw them out equally. Boy. Then any, any dead bees from all this work uh, they drag them out the entrance too and get rid of them. So, I'm gonna clean this off. Yep. Getting into the wood. This propolis just sticks everything together. Okay, now we're gonna slip a new one in here. Did you already move the queen over? No, we got to move the queen next. In All fact, right. I got ahead of myself. We want to uh, pull that one out. Because she's on a frame and we want to put that frame in here. sure we get her make sure she's on this frame mm. Hmm. I didn't see her maybe I just shook her in the box <laughs> mm -hmm. I should have looked on that lid first Queen. 
she would have gone down in there if she was there. That so, fast? Yeah. She didn't like the sunlight. Hmm. Yeah, I should have looked at that lid before I shook them off. She might have been on there. Well, we'll make the assumption she's in there. So no divider then? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the divider. You got it? Okay. Well, yeah, they're getting mad now. After 15 years, you're used to it, but when you started out, were you just like yeah. constantly pumping the smoke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still do if they get pissy. These are really calm. I mean, right. they're, not, uh, they're not agitated. What I don't like is I got a hold here, and that old frame is uh, messed up. The thing could climb up around the wall. See, this is probably nothing to you, but we're hearing the increased buzzing. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, climbing all over my GoPro. <laughs> and then, of course, I don't have gloves on. <laughs> oh, no, your back's clean now. <laughs> yeah, it probably smelled too new. Get too far from the high. You know? <laughs> well, I was wondering if maybe they're used to him, and when you two left, oh. they started getting. I don't know. Because that's when I moved over here. <laughs> <from> here. <laughs> I think they were on you from the get go. <laughs> well, they were on me, but they, yeah. they weren't sounding angry and, and buzzing okay. until you two left. Duct tape fixes everything. I patched the hole in the queen excluder because I don't want the queen coming up into the upper box. And of course, it has to be yellow to match, to match the painting. Well, sure. Of course. <laughs> Okay, we're ready for these girls to go on here. I always set them at a angle like this and just gently move it down to push them out of the way. Then when you twist it, it kind of pushes them out of the way. You do it slowly so you don't squish a bunch of bees. Like that. Okay. And you're fine with one glove now? Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're calm. They're no gloves. There you go. I gotta get an inner cover for this. So I'll be right back. Maybe you could come up and we'll get some uh, sugar water to feed okay. the bees. Bring it down. So that sugar water, how much water do you put in and how much, just, it's plain sugar, right? It's, yeah, just sugar. It's like four pound bag of sugar to a quart of water. A quart? Uh-huh. So four pounds of sugar and one quart of water. Then they boil it to dissolve it down to liquid. Oh, there's a hole in the side. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now your hands are going to be all sugary. No, crap, you're right. <laughs> what happened? He got, he got the sugar a, water all over his clothes. There's a hole in the well, side. So, get another cup to pour down. 
Oh, he did. I did. That's the new oh, cup. Oh, can't get it together. out. Yeah, you yeah. gotta get it separated first. Yeah, I was in a panic because the there you go. water was <laughs> leaking out. But yes, now I have sugar water on my gloves, so that should oh, be Oh boy, the bees will love you now. <laughs> Yeah, they'll find that sugar water and clean it up. Yeah, they'll come up here and clean it. Yeah. Okay. Those are a poor man's uh, bee feeder. New fish. <laughs> That's pretty heavy with honey. There's some honey. Eat it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through the mask. <laughs> I know sometimes I'm out here and I forget and I go, oops. <laughs> but I have learned that summertime I get really thirsty, but I can drink water through my veil, so it works out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is gonna be a pain to get out. Usually you squish the 10 frames together in the middle and then it leaves you room to jockey one out, but these are kind of spaced all stuck together. Well, yeah, that's easy. Lots of pollen. Wow. I don't know where they're getting the pollen this early. Yeah. It's loaded. Just hold it. Well, no, <laughs> you can lean it against that other hive. Just anywhere. Just where it won't fall over. They don't like to get... No, don't put it near the entrance. Just on the side is good. If you do it at the entrance, they'll start fighting. Right. <laughs> start a war. Yeah. I don't want to be here. Whoops. No, no. Yo. Yeah, here's the brood. That's looking good. Now I'd like to find the queen. And sometimes she's under a cluster. Like here. Yeah, here you can see some of the different colors of bees. I saw one that was just really black. But here's, see how the body is oh, black yeah. on that one and these are golden? Mm -hmm. It's probably from different drones. All from the same queen. All the same queen, but just a different male. <laughs> Looking for new eggs. This has young eggs in it. A few. Huh. So if you don't have a unmarked or if you don't have a marked queen, you just look for like activity because isn't she like supposed to be yeah she'll backing up or something she's usually they're... constantly moving and yeah you look for activity but no there's no drones Workers, this, I mean. there's no drones this time here's a black one i was talking about it's really black yeah doesn't look like there's another one yeah so those are there's another there's several of them but yeah, they're from different drones, probably. Huh. Okay, well, that's got that's got potential for a split here. This is a pretty strong hive with all that honey they've got. You can even feel the warmth coming out of here. Wow. Now these are drone cells. See, so they're busy. This this hive's ahead of the other two because they're making all these drones. 
they'll make a bunch of drones in the spring with uh, I don't see any eggs on that one. Will they not mate with the, their own drones? Right. They'll know? Yeah. The joke is, they say the queen's promiscuous and she takes her maiden flight and she goes out and hangs out at the drone bar <laughs> and meets with several drones and then they fly off and she mates with several. <laughs> and when she's satisfied, she comes back. <laughs> You can see all the bees yeah, attacking already, the honey. They're already so take it back. ready to pull it back down in there. Teacher told us the story of a guy who didn't protect his harvest, harvested honey very well. And <laughs> the bees <laughs> found it and uh, took yeah. it all back because yeah. he didn't. Uh, uh, I've had that happen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, and after you harvest, you put all the wax out. Well, you? yeah, when you're done harvesting, you you spun the honey out of these frames and they're still sticky. So what you do is just set them back on the hives and close it up and come back the next day. They've cleaned it all out. It's just spotless. So and then even all your equipment, you just set it out in the yard and they'll lick it clean. It's really bad when you have drones. Are you cause about that one there? Well, that, that looks like a drone. Yeah, I think yeah, that's uh, a drone. There's another, there's another drone over here. Somewhere. So he must have hatched out. So the drones are starting to hatch. That's the first drone we've seen. That one's got an orange stripe on its back. Just naturally, but mm -hmm. it doesn't work. So right now you're trying to find some young eggs. Yeah, looking for young eggs and looking for a queen. If you want to look it over, James. Of, uh, a bunch of spotter, but it's okay. easy to easy to miss them, and then you go back through. And sometimes I've gone through three times before I find her. She's... Oh, there she is, right there. Yeah, yeah, she's marked. That makes it easy. Well, good. Nice. I think I'll put this in a box so we don't lose her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like we lost the last one. Let me grab it. Yeah, do you want to tape the hole? <laughs> no, she shouldn't leave. I bet she was uh, on that lid and I shook it off. There you go. Okay. All right. Found the queen. Nice. And we'll keep looking. Oh man, that's all honey. Oh. Yeah, I think we're out of the brood chamber now. So this is all honey now. They've got lots of honey in here. Yeah. Oh, there's another box. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, so you're done looking for a brood in this one. Right. Yep. So, uh, let's see. One of these was it? No, it wasn't that one. Was this one, I think, had some young ones on it. Look at the, look at the pink. I'm trying to steam my. <laughs> the well, GoPro and my. Uh, oh, this had all the drone he's cells. Made a powerful enemy. Yeah, <laughs> he's stinging away on my GoPro. <laughs> they only sting once. Oh, look at him. See him? Can purchase. Mm. He's what like, he's looking for? Not too happy. He's a finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at the stinger. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. He did sting you. Yeah. Yep. So he's toast. Yeah. Yeah, you want to pull <laughs> it out? Slide it. Do you want to slide it off? Not. I don't know if I've got the dexterity in these gloves. It won't, it won't bother you. <laughs> I think he's what? Well, maybe most of the brood's down in the bottom box. Look at the difference now. See, even more of them are getting the honey yeah. out of there. Yeah, they'll clean it up. Mm -hmm. but Let's open that third uh, thing. Okay. And we'll set this one in there. And what was the name of it again? The Queen Castle. The Queen Castle. Yeah. So we got two going so far and adding a, starting a third. Yep. So once again, this one has a lot of... It had a lot of eggs and uh, 
uh, young eggs on honey. it so it can they can form a queen okay. out of that. And so then what kind of additional? Well, we're gonna, <laughs> this is a plastic queen excluder, which they're way cheaper than the metal ones, but the thing I don't like about it is there's, the other ones, the metal ones have a wood frame around them, so there's room for the bees to walk in between it. Oh. And this doesn't allow that, so hmm. I just don't. I bought a whole pack of them and I don't like them very well. But I'll show you what I mean when you put it on there, it kind of. You mean it, it lays too flat? It lays too flat. There's barely enough room under there uh, for the bees to yeah. work, walk back and forth. And then they build propolis in there and then it gets stuck down. And it's just uh, easily or easily torn, I think, too. Yeah. So stick with the wood. Stick with wood and metal. Yeah. All right, we're ready to set that on here. Ooh. Yeah, with no room there. Oops, I think I'll just start it on the end. And... Also, I have to be pretty exact. In this yeah, closer the better. Okay. We didn't do a fourth uh, queen castle. Castle. I thought we did. We only did three. We only did three. That's where we're looking through the bottom. Oh, what's for eggs? Or two out of that and one out of here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's that's all we can do. Okay. Okay. I'll come back in a week or so and check this one we didn't do. Maybe it'll be further along. Scrape that off, but they'll just build it all back. So. <laughs> we'll seal it up, make it warm. Okay. The end. That's it. So you went from three hives and then you started three more queen castles over here so that'll double your amount of hives this spring yeah how how long are you going to wait until you move the queen castle into their own boxes well we have to see if it takes we gotta i need to leave them alone for almost uh two weeks don't disturb them then get in there and see if they've made a queen cell. And uh, in fact, you should wait. I always get impatient, I want to look. <laughs> but I'll do a quick look and make sure they're making a queen cell in each one of those. And then, then you wait until the queen hatches and is taking her maiden flight and comes back because that could take three or four days or a week. Then so, you know, you might not know for a month if you've got a good queen. Okay. Because then you get in, if she came back, you find her, and you'll see that she started laying eggs already. And how, what's the success rate that you've experienced so far? Well, they say you have about 75% chance of them working, so hmm. that's, that's about the odds. And so between that and then catching uh, swarms, Right. By the summer, how how many hives would you say you end up with? Well, I like to end up with 12 to 15 hives. Over several different properties? Yeah, I got three more hives at another property. Yeah. That I'll get in sometime soon. Is this property you also own, or do you have like no, friends it's that a friend want of mine's bees on place. them? Or? It's a friend of mine's place in Shawnee. He's got a couple of acres. Oh, okay. Then you've got the lot. Uh, if you want to bring that sugar water down, I'm going to fill these feeders and feed these three okay. hives. Sugar water? Yep. All right, let's feed some bees. There you go. You're ready. Yeah, I don't, don't trust me to fill that one and then uh, fill one. I got more. I think we need more probably. Yes, yeah, so that's why you didn't want to hold it. <laughs>
Well, Lisa's dripping in the right place. <laughs> You're not going to have enough to fill three jars, are you? Probably not. I'll go up and get some more. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I'll oh, keep him happy. Not bees. I don't want to squish you. Oh. I think he's actually trying to push it over there. There we go. Nice. So what are your takeaways so far? I enjoyed, enjoyed it. Uh, I, I like the idea of the Queen Castle because we didn't talk about or didn't have anything like that because uh, I guess he just does it differently. And um, interesting marking the Queen. That was good because I remember we had to look for it for a while and just look for you know all the activity mm -hmm. and hopefully find it we got lucky uh, i think um, yeah <coughs> i'm allergic to bees that's the tough part <laughs> yeah well let's see let's pour it in the pitcher first bees oh yeah i guess that would be <coughs> already got one on there he's jones and yeah <laughs> Thank you. Yep, <laughs> you can do that here. Nice. And should we twist that around so it's got the lines instead of the hole? So bees don't go in the pitcher? Yeah. Well, or just, just turn it a little bit and it'll be sealed, sealed. off. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Did you get the other jars full? Okay. Yeah. Alright, there you go, girls. Okay. Then there's pro and con on entrance feeders. They say entrance feeders promotes robbing because they'll, they'll come around and start fighting. But I've not had much problem. There's also top feeders. Mm -hmm. There's also feeders that fit in in place of a frame. Now, do you have any problem with your hives this close? Cause nope, no, we're all happy. Every beekeeper is different. You were told, yeah. you know, five to six feet or so. Like we're all done. These girls are all happy. I'm gonna leave them closed up for about three days. Okay. And then when you, that way the bees don't fly back to their colony. And then after about three days, when you open it they'll do an orientation flight and say, oh, this is my new home. So it keeps them going back to that hive because you don't want all those bees going back over there. Then it wouldn't have heat on the brood here. Hmm. It used to be everybody taught, well, you got to move them three miles away to another bee yard. Right. And that's too much work. <laughs> I just keep them closed up for a few days. <laughs> 